Hello everybody, this is Israel Balderas, and my next guest has some very tough words against those who would say bad things about President Donald Trump. Hi everybody, Judge Janine Pirro uh, has an amazing resume that everyone would read it and go, wow. Uh, you've been a district attorney, you were the first female district attorney in Westchester County, yeah. first female judge in Westchester County, and then you also considered a run against former First Lady and former U.S. Senator from New York, Hillary Clinton. Right, and, and then I jumped over to the Attorney General's race. I ran against Andrew Cuomo, and he won that race, and New York is a very interesting place to run, uh, but I ran there five times, and uh, it, politics, you know, is a blood sport. It really is, and uh, for me, it was really a mechanism to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a prosecutor. I wanted to be a judge. I mean, that was in my wheelhouse, and the way to get there was to run for office. The politician route really wasn't for me. And now you're on TV. You're a host of uh, Fox News Channel show on Saturdays, right. Justice with Janine, uh, Justice with Judge Janine. Tell me, what's your aim of your show? What do you sort of want to come across uh, to your viewers when you're on TV? You know, I, I it, it took me a while. Initially, uh, when they gave me the show, Roger Ailes, who, who was the head of Fox at the time, named it Justice with Judge Janine. And everybody assumed that I would be talking about crime because back then there was a Casey Anthony case and the George Zimmerman case and all these other big criminal cases. And that's obviously my wheelhouse. I tried cases and then I ran an office. Uh, and, but, but it appeared that to me, the more I saw uh, what was going on in Washington. I thought there was more crime going on in D.C. than there is in criminal courtrooms across the country. Yeah. So uh, I, I went to politics and it just, it just resonated with my viewers. And so what I want them to know is number one, what the news of the week is, and then what my take on it is, and then as a prosecutor, as a judge, as someone who's had to argue to juries, I outline what the facts are, I then argue what my take is. You know, you, it's in, in, in media, you would call it editorializing. In the courtroom, you call it summations. Uh, and, but it really is an open of the show. And then the rest of the show kind of is a little bit of the pieces that fit into the original opening. And I write it all. I write every word of it. No one writes it for me. And it's more fun, I'm sure, than politics, right? Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> I used to be, I, I'm a fighter, and I like fighting. So in politics, I can fight with yeah. people. <laughs> well, listen, on the day that we're doing this taping, uh, right. here's what's happening in Washington, D.C. Michael Cohen, former attorney for right. Donald Trump, is testifying on Capitol Hill today. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Let the record show that the witness answered in the affirmative. As a former prosecutor, as a former judge, and I know you were very close to the president, yeah. what is your initial take on what's uh, happening? Because uh, he is saying some pretty harsh things about the president. I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. I know you've come out and said some harsh things about him. But how damaging will today's testimony on Capitol Hill be for the president? Let me ask you a question. If you're looking for the truth and you want to know what is going on, why would you go to someone who is a convicted perjurer, someone who has already lied to Congress, and in your first hearing call someone who lied to you already simply because you want to make a political statement that Donald Trump is not a good man? All right, I know Michael Cohen, and as you said, in the interest of uh, transparency, I mean, I've known him for 30 years. He's my friend. Uh, and I also know Michael Cohen, and I know what he's like, okay? Uh, Michael Cohen, uh, the allegations that he made, and I, have, I haven't seen them all, but uh, I understand that Lynn Patton got up today, who's an African-American, at the hearing. To actually shed some light, how long have you known Ms. Patton? I'm responsible for Lynn Patton joining the Trump Organization and the job that she currently holds. Well, uh, that's, I'm glad you acknowledge that because you made some very um, demeaning comments about the, the president that Ms. Patton doesn't agree with. In fact, it has to do with your claim of racism. 
and I know her, and she'll be on my show this weekend. Uh, guys, that's called a tease. And we'll, so. and we'll post this on the Beacon today, just in time so that people know, okay. right, before your and show. And she will be able to talk about what she couldn't talk about in Congress today. But no, am I worried about it? Look, you've got Bob Mueller and a team of 17 of the most anti-Trump federal prosecutors I've ever seen. And in two years, they haven't come up with one iota of evidence. What we do have are 13 Russians who have been indicted for trying to interfere in the election. None of them will ever be brought to this country. They'll never be arrested, arraigned, or prosecuted, convicted, or sentenced in the United States. None of them having anything to do with Donald Trump. So honestly, you give me evidence. You talk my language, I'm all ears. All right, well, but until then... I ain't buying it. Well, let me talk circumstantial evidence for just a <laughs> moment, right? Let's talk about the people who Bob Mueller has indicted. He's indicted, uh, of course, Michael Cohen. Uh, he's indicted and now convicted Paul Manafort, a uh, former campaign manager to Donald Trump. He has also uh, gone after Richard Gates, who was a business associate of Manafort. He pleaded guilty to charges of conspiring against the U.S. Uh, Mueller also went after a foreign policy advisor, jo George Papadopoulos, uh, former NSA advisor, General Michael Flynn, and then he also went after several other folks. Let who me make it easy campaign. for you. So, because you asked me the question, you said, let me, let me start having the, the evidence. You are a former prosecutor. That's quite the record for uh, Bob Mueller when you've had those many convictions all related to Donald Trump. Would you agree with me on that? Absolutely not. None of those convictions are related to Donald Trump, and that is the point. The fact that Paul Manafort is in solitary confinement, who will spend the rest of his life in prison, he will die in prison for crimes totally unrelated to anything having to do with the president or the campaign or Russia, is the point. He knew he worked for Donald Trump for three months because Donald Trump needed to get through the convention. Corey Lewandowski wasn't the guy who knew that part of the campaign. So was he convicted? Did he deserve being convicted? I assume he was deserving of being convicted. But it had nothing to do with Donald Trump and the campaign itself. You show me that connection, I'm the first one to come up on your train and say you're absolutely right. And that is the point. This alleged collusion, this alleged co-conspiracy. I mean, and, and now they've got, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Roger Stone, all right? Good friend of Donald Trump. All process crimes. What is a process crime? A process crime is when I'm investigating a crime and I go to you and you don't know anything about the crime but you lie about something else. I'm going to indict you for perjury. Okay, the only reason we didn't see process crimes in the Hillary Clinton investigation is because James Comey didn't do a real investigation. No one was questioned. No one was brought to the grand jury. No search warrants, no arrest warrants, none of that. So you will find process crimes. And I've been a prosecutor. I'm, I know the gig. I know how the game is played. So can I ask you about that? Because part of the process crimes, right, with Bob Mueller and some of the attorneys that you know that work in the Southern District of New York, right. they are experts at going after mobs, right, after going after yeah. people who've committed certain crimes. And the way the process crimes goes is you get the bottom rung of the individuals and then you work your way up. And many people have said what Mueller is doing and what the attorneys are doing in the Southern District is they've gotten all these folks correctly right they pleaded mm -hmm. guilty yep. to other crimes yes. but what they're also gathering is testimony against sort of the people at the top mm -hmm. whether it's Don Jr's son for Donald Trump Ivanka Trump who is the daughter of uh, Donald Trump or Donald Trump himself as a prosecutor can you at least say hey look that's pretty impressive you got that bunch and they certainly are working their way up mm -hmm. and Michael Cohen is just one more of that sort of piece of the of the step up look what you're talking about is the framework that I used I work with the feds all the time. What we do is we squeeze people. We convict them and we get them by the short hairs and we pull and we pull. And what we try to do is get information. You, you know, it's like, I think it was Judge Tillis who said in the appeal of the Michael Flynn case, he said, look, I know what these prosecutors are doing. I, I know what they're trying to do, but give me something, give me something. All right, I understand the game. I played it for 30 years, but you've got to get something. Look, there are people who will throw their mothers under the bus to not go to prison. But until you give me evidence, I, 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 I have to say I haven't seen anything and I have nothing to argue because there's no evidence. Okay. 
Judge Janine Pirro, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.